There we go, that should be it. Wow. <clears throat> Is this one out of frame? Yes, it's out of frame. Good evening, Commanders, and uh, welcome back. Ah, we have people on on, uh, on Twitch from uh, from the Mighty Deagle salt mines directly into space. Um, so, how's everybody doing? Um, I just want to give you a quick introduction to what we're going to do today because it's a little bit different than what I usually do. Um, I thought since I've been gone for like the last, well, at least week I've been probably gone, but like two weeks almost have been pretty uh, preoccupied um with other stuff and thank you um both the judge and <laughs> cesspool said uh, congratulations on how the honeymoon honeymoon was amazing um but what i'm gonna do today is <clears throat> i actually have two guests so i'm gonna let them introduce themselves here in a second and we're just gonna be having like a a, a very casual chit chat about the whole station interior um versus ship interior um all that stuff and um we'll see where it goes from there i i don't have an agenda or anything like that but we're just going to be starting and then having a casual chat like you guys can come with your your feedback and in the chat we'll try to implement that and talk about some topics if you guys have some good points we'll try to do that and in the background while we're just having a, a casual chat i'll be running on my uh, alt who's out in the middle of nowhere right now i should just quickly jump in game here um as you can, uh, uh, there we go. As you can see here, I'm like there where I need to head up to this little cluster of bookmarks that I want to explore in this area. It's around 5,000 light years, so it's not too bad. Uh, probably not gonna make all of it tonight, but we're gonna see if we can, um, if we can't make at least some a bit of headway in that direction. I'll be doing that in the background and stop and look if there's anything interesting. Um, but let me just get people online here, so. There we go. We now have Discord on the stream as well. I hope. Yes. No. Hello. Hello. Ah, oh, there we go. Hi. I'm just gonna turn you guys up a little bit so you <clears throat> hopefully have a bit, a little bit better sound level. So, um, why don't you guys just quickly <coughs> introduce yourself? I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, tracks. Who are you? And what do you do? Uh, who am I? So just some commander. Uh, I I am uh, <laughs> Commander J and Tracks uh, on the Loose Screws podcast. Um, from old old buddies with Kai Zen, and uh, yeah, that that's about the size of it. Little game community, occasional streamer, not very much. Cool. So Tracks from Loose Screw and Kai. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. I am Kai Zen from Elite Week, uh, and I am a drinker of beer and flyer of spaceships. Drink and fly. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I guess a very brief recap, just in case someone has absolutely not paid attention to what's been going on in Elite for last week's time, would be uh, would be in order. Um, the main thing I wanted to, to just quickly chat about today was the um, what actually surprised me, the announcement that um, we're going to get station interiors instead of ship interiors. At first, that surprised me quite a bit, but I don't know, to me it's made a little bit more sense uh, after thinking about it, but basically with... Um, with Odyssey, we're going to get uh, station interiors, but not uh, ship interiors. And I don't believe ship interiors is even on the roadmap at the moment. I, I thought they said not at launch, but sometime. Okay. Yeah, they, they have not given any indication on whether or not it's in the roadmap. But what they they did say mm -hmm. is, as, as Trax just said, not at launch. And they said the reason for this is that they didn't feel that they had built up enough gameplay loops right now to mm. justify it so that it would yeah. just be sort of a novelty. But they had, in fact, put a lot of gameplay loops into internal stations, so they wanted to debut that first. That was exactly the way, same thing I, I thought, at that it must have been a developing effort to playable content balance that made the tip that decision, I think. Which um, is exciting mm. when you think about Yes. What that means is that it's not just that we're getting walking in stations, but we're going to get meaningful stuff to do there. And mm -hmm. they said that they will be showing it on the next live stream. 
So I'm very, very excited for, or, I'm sorry, the next developer diary, which yes. I'm very excited for. And I've been thinking a lot about it over the last week. I've had a lot of spare time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I actually have a hard time seeing anything. There's a few things, but most of the things you could do with ship interiors, you could do with stations as well. Mm. Mm. I agree. I mean, with 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 very few exceptions, yeah. Obviously, straight up boarding actions is is not gonna be doable with without ships and serials. That's that's right. pretty pretty obvious. But correct. And there's there's a certain aspect of uh, sort of vanity items, as in like player housing or whatever that you mm. can see with a, like a captain's ready room or whatever that that would be sort of unique to ships. Mm. Over and oh. above that, you think like a little bit of like the Sims, you can put plants here and there, kind of stuff, <laughs> stuff like that. And then, and over and above the vanity aspect of, of player housing, which is big for MMOs, and I think that mm -hmm. they will eventually tap into that market. I see on ship activities being things like advanced levels of engineering, maybe uh, some form of a, a science bay that has like botany stuff that we could do with all of these new plant things or whatever. Um, or things like you could have a conference room in your in your uh, Corvette that has your BGS stuff up and you can have your squadron members either telepresence or actually physically be there for, for a squad briefing. There's, mm. there's lots of cool stuff, but it will come in time. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I was thinking, it's... yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I like the idea of the vanity items. I think that's interesting that they don't focus on ship interiors because that exactly that like there's an opportunity there for like arc store stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that says to me, like, you know, we're not just pumping our arc store, you know, we're working on other things first kind of thing. Yeah, but to be honest, if, the, if they, all they did was just say, hey, we've got to give you ship interiors and all you could do with ship interiors was run around and buy different colored plants to put in the corners yeah people were gonna get pretty disappointed um and pretty mad yeah that, that's what i mean right yeah. like they're working on stuff that we want not just stuff that they want to sell us yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Now, don't get me wrong I, I would be the first one to go out and buy all the different colored plants <laughs> when they are available but <laughs> i i get that the gameplay loop is well sure yeah but one thing I thought, because when we look at, at stuff like ship uh, shipboarding, I mean, obviously we're going to have the social hops uh, at stations, hopefully. Um, but all the different installations that has been in the game since years, but has never really been used for anything other than a, a curiosity. You go in, you visit them, and it's a fun place to visit. Um, Lore and Matt gathering. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty much it. Imagine having those as walkable objects. So you could have um, a lot of these are, are illegal installations where you have pirates and, and that kind of stuff. Um, like you fly out there in your ship, you shoot down some pirates, you fly up to the installation and you jump mm. inside it and you have to run around inside and shoot up people to, I don't know, loot some cargo or save some damsel right. in distress or something like that. Well, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, from a G BGS aspect, we have conflict zones where we go and fight in a war mm. over who's going to have, you know, control over a system or whatever. Who's to say we couldn't have conflict zones where we go in and FPS shoot in some installation as also being part of that deciding factor of who's going to take control over, over a station? I'm almost certain that there's going to be some on foot uh, ways to influence BGS in the system. It would make no sense. If, if... Right. Correct. Absolutely well, not. Well, <laughs> specifically because David Braben stated, we've transposed all of the existing game loops from your ship into on foot. So what I say when I, when I think about that is you're going to have on foot exploration. You're going to have on foot, you know, uh, BGS style combat, whatever. Theoretically, you're going to have on foot Thargoid style combat. You're going to have um, things like on foot engineering, on foot, uh, you know, modules and, and, and fixing up your ship, I would think. Um, 
I, I, and I want power. I want, I want highly engineered power gloves and glory kills on Thargoids. <laughs> Well, you say, you say fixing up your ship. Uh, that that seems like something that wouldn't be available no, no. until we got the ship interiors. You mean something? I'm sorry. Different. No, I didn't say fixing up your shit. I I, I'm, I said fixing up your kit, like your your uh, gear, yeah, your yeah. suit. Mm. Uh, so so that like I'm going to engineer advanced uh, booster rockets. I'm going to un- yeah. engineer uh, uh, ablative plating armor for my for my suit. Stuff yeah. like that. Right. Just as Horizons uh, to engineer, you have to go to the planet. Uh, to do any of the upgrades and stuff involving uh, elite feet, you'd have to enter elite feet. Yeah, and part of I the al- universe. I, I also feel very strongly that. So I I think they're going to announce the next Dev Diary this week, probably on on Thursday's stream, and I think they're going to show that Dev Diary before the end of the month. And I think when they do Most show likely, that Dev yeah. Diary. I think they're going to blow people's minds because there's going to be aspects there in that dev diary that's only about the location, but is going to give us information that we can piece together breadcrumbs about what's coming in the future on the gameplay loops, i.e. I think they're going to show us a bar. I think they're going to show us some weird trading house or some some sort of things that have not been explicitly alluded to Mm. yet are going to change the nature of the things you can do in the game. Imagine getting your character drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm more so thinking, so I, I'm a very firm believer that Frontier isn't going to turn around and make it to where you have to like land your ship and go walk over to a mission giver to get your missions that you currently get off the board. I think right. all no, of the no. stuff you can do on the board now, you will be able to do on the board later. But I do like the idea of going to a bar where some shady dude gives you a new type of mission that is mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, here's some weird treasure map that's probably, you're probably going to get jumped on the way or here's, I don't know, stuff. <laughs> Yeah, we have multi-part missions where, like, okay, go to that guy. Uh, he has a clue about where someone is. Go talk to him. Get a map or whatever, and then go to some other planet and find a guy and shoot him up or save him or whatever you need to do. Take his stuff. Um, yeah. I want to point out something to you, Astro, because you've been away, so you might not have seen it as of yet, but I would be very excited and interested to hear from your audience who presumably have been playing Elite sort of daily and haven't been on a honeymoon. Uh, I've noticed that lately, uh, just in, in since the Galnet thing came back, they flipped a switch and I've been getting a massively higher percentage of uh, like tip-off type missions or whatever. And I oh. would be very interested to see if other people are having... And, and some of these tip-off missions are, are, are sort of weird. There was one... Uh, where it was like, go here and you're going to get something from Holly Golightly, which is the Audrey Hepburn's character from, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mm-hmm. And like, there's, 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 there's been weird stuff. So I would like to see, yeah, I'm seeing people in the hmm. chat say, yeah, yes, yeah. they've been getting more. So I, I think it could be all, all good. Oh. Like, Zero stop. on my Sorry. end, but. Interesting. I haven't had any, but I haven't run any missions either, so that might have something to do with it. They seem to be spawning mm. after you complete missions. There seems to be like a chance that yes, after you complete a mission, you get a tip off. Do do chains count? I, I've gotten one chain. I've been doing no, a lot of missions no, no, the past no. couple of days, but Ch- yeah. chains are different. Chain chain missions yeah. are different. There's, there's those are just like a new mission that happens to follow the other one, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it. But the idea is yeah. good. But I haven't seen the tip offs in a while. Uh, only the message like, hey, you did this for us. We have something else for you at this mission board. But I had mm. to go to the mission board I, to pick it up, so I don't think that counts. Yeah, no, I got, I, for example, uh, and now this was a day where I was A, I did rescues of all of the stations, and then I did uh, uh, like a l- good bit of missions for turning the dark wheel. And I got three tip offs in one day, which is unprecedented for me. I haven't seen a tip off in. A year or two, I think. It's been a while, good while, since I've seen any at all. Yeah. Okay, so like people are asking in chat what tip-offs are, and I, to, to be honest, I can't blame you because they have been very rare <laughs> until now. Basically, 
back in the day, it used to be whenever you were running missions, there was a small chance that you would, let's say five minutes after completing the mission, you would up here in your information panel, you would get a small email saying, hey, by the way, we've heard that some ship crashed over there on that planet 40 light years away. If you want to, you can go check it out. Here's the coordinates. And you could go there, there would be, uh, there could be various types of activities that happen. But that's basically like just a small message saying there's a tip about something's happening. And you can go and you can investigate it if you want to and you can leave it. Um, but yeah, yeah, no tip offs for me at least. Uh, but I can, I haven't been running missions actually. I mean, it's less than 24 hours since we landed, so it's been <laughs> been a little limited on what I've been able to do in games so far. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, is that an ice world or a earth like? I think it's an ice world. Let me check it anyway. Um, but that would be an. It would be a very frontier like a way way to notch people into finding something they have hidden. Um, yes, absolutely. And. Right. I am almost 100% sure there's going to be hidden, new hidden stuff for us to go and explore on, on foot now. I uh, I would like to, for all the people in the chat that are saying like, yeah, man, I've been getting them. I, I've been getting them. I would like to point out two things. Um, if you want to run it, I highly encourage you to do it. And, and that's awesome. If you're like, eh, I can't be bothered. Canon uh, definitely accepts those tips. So if you want to go to the Canon uh, research uh, Discord, you can post it there. Or if you go to the Elite Week Discord and you post it in the tinfoil hat room, we will have somebody that will go to the location and chase it down just to see, you watch, know, yeah, if that. there's because a lot of those tip offs do point to sort of new land bases, new POIs, new interesting things. So persistent things. Yeah. Yes. yes. Some, some yes, some no. Some yeah. point yeah. to g randomly generated those little bases where you like your search zone type right. things, and those disappear when you zone out. But other ones <clears throat> point to wreckage or some form of a like a you know brain tree or some kind of a a, a, a thing that is a persistent Something. thing that has. Yeah. And some of those are have never been seen before. Yeah, I've only ever followed up on one, and it was one of these nonsense things, and the reward was minuscule and i thought oh well that's silly i never did another one now so only, I, i've only got the ones that i've recalled at least that you know you find some crash ship you scan the data core and you get like a data package you can go and sell that for like a million or two um mm. so to be honest mm. it's not it would if you could generate them consistently it wouldn't be a bad way to make money early game because just yeah. complete whatever mission you do early, yeah and just go scan a crash ship boom there's two three million in your account Although I would warn people who are new, be very careful because some of those missions, like I've done those and they send you to like one of those bases where you have to scan the beacon, mm. but they're considerably, those ones that are from the tip offs are considerably more heavily armed. So be very, very yeah. careful because they can shoot through your shields pretty fast. Or they're a goose chase and they, you have to actually find like four locations before you get to the end of the, the and, path. And I completely get it. And if you're looking at a credits per hour efficiency, <laughs> whatever, that definitely does not hold a cake or hold candle to, you know, pay night mining. But no. if you're looking from the aspect of but nothing does <laughs> oh, crap. This is something new and something <laughs> interesting and something maybe that I can be the first to discover something. Frontier have been known to how shall we say they have their things that are hidden. And then if we don't, if we monkeys in spaceships don't find them fast enough, eventually they'll signpost and be like, no jerk off, go over there. There's something. Nudge, nudge. Yeah, that been, yeah. I think the main way people have been discovering things, like looking aside to Thargoid uh, bases and all that stuff, that was this whole separate thing. But all these other like things people have been finding on, on planets, I think the majority has been found through listing posts then mm -hmm. some through tip-offs and then a rare number through basically mark one eyeballing them well if i can give you sort of a prime example the last huge thing that happened in the game was the golconda event mm -hmm. and the golconda was literally found by frontier putting in a cheeky little one line at the end of their um 
uh, Galnet article about uh, the Rockforth fertilizer debacle and the blight, saying yeah. lots of places are without food, especially this weird Eupanicles system that seems to be really hurting for food right now. And it was literally <laughs> commanders that were like, why are you talking about Eupanicles? And then went there and then was like, holy crap, there's a generation ship here. Yeah, yeah, if I remember, there was like a mention that they got a, a, a distress call that they didn't expect or that didn't match something, right? Or, or mm. something. No, are, are it, we it sure? literally just said that they were experiencing even more need for food than other places by the blight. Mm. And then when after people got there was when that came out. Okay. But I think that I think that generation ship has been there for a while, and that is Frontier just going, okay, now we've got to signpost it. <laughs> we got to yep. make sure that, because yeah, people have exactly. been been missing that for so long that it's about time we give them something. And uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's so so. What I what I mean though is that it is not mm. beyond the wit of man to to sort of, you know, that's how Frontier does it. If yes. if they want to tell us something. They will, and so they might generate the mission to me, and I go, I ignore it because I'm like, nah, that's a waste of my time. And they're like, oh crap, this guy didn't do it. All right, I'll generate the mission for uh, tracks, and tracks goes, nah, I'm busy. <laughs> no way. And they're like, all right, and then they generate the mission for for down to earth, and Astro's the one that actually goes, oh, let's go see. And when he shows up and finds a new thing, he gets to be the famous commander who found the new thing. So it, it's it's cool, it's fun. But again, there was somebody asking what was the the ratio between um, I can't remember the exact wording dead end tip offs and unique tip offs. I would say the vast majority is probably going to be dead ends. Sure. But it's a little bit like playing the lottery. Every time you uh, uh, <laughs> you run a tip off, worst case you maybe find something that's relatively useless. You get a few hundred thousand or maybe a, a million uh, credits out of it. Well, best case. You just found something brand new nobody's seen before. But the fact that Frontier at the exact same day as they say we're bringing back story stuff and new crap to the game, these things started to get turned back on, that to me is a tip off that something somewhere is going to lead to something cool. Or if not that, then just they've expanded some game loop and, and maybe there's new fun stuff that you'll find there. Or there is something that they want us to find before a certain date, because it's gonna fit into their whole, what, two year planned narrative thing. Um, yeah. I guess, okay, so we're just gonna take that news in case somebody haven't seen that either. What Frontier <laughs> has done now, and I absolutely love it. First of all, of course, they have reinstated um, Galnet not only as a, um, as an event where you show notable events, but also just for law stuff like mm -hmm. small stories, but they have made a dedicated Galnet slash law team, which is only job, like physical people sitting working, where their job is to basically write the story of Elite, to make sure we have not only community goals, um, but also bonus weekends are coming back. I love that. It's the best thing ever. They did and it once or something, and then, mm. then they just, Stop, <laughs> which I think is a shame. Well, in addition to that, Astro, they also said that they are going to have uh, special events. So, for example, they mentioned specifically there will be a Christmas event and a Halloween event. Mm. Yeah. That could be. Have they done holiday events before? They have not. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. The closest thing they've done to holiday <laughs> events is like an advert calendar where there would be special paint jobs up for sale. Yeah, no. But oh, sure, is, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but nothing in game, on a large scale at least. Um, yeah, the way they made this sound, it <clears> would be <throat> the kind of things that you see in Final Fantasy or in World of Warcraft, where you log in on Christmas and there's probably some special Christmas mission to do, and then that mission will maybe give you a little Christmas tree bobblehead or a some kind of a reward that is tied to that seasonal event yeah. oh if all commanders suddenly got a snowball launcher for for their ship they can fly around and shoot snowballs at each other <laughs> that'd be a good cqc uh yeah, yeah. Add on. <laughs> snowball launcher mode yeah well since you mentioned that and we're talking about 
new things in the game and whatever, I think there would also probably be some CQC component where you can sort of, for lack of another way of putting it, run around in a little area and Fortnite it up if you want. Yeah, you think like uh, like an, an arena type uh, PP mode, basically. Probably it doesn't it doesn't take mm. too much of a stretch to think that that would be the the um, sort of. But do you do you think Frontier would? I mean, to be honest, CQC isn't the most <laughs> um, isn't the most played <laughs> game mode. Now we have people chat. What CQC exactly? Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, so and they never made one for SRVs. No, that's, 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 that is true, but um, they never said they were going to transpose all the game loops into SRVs either. No, but I, I, while CQC might not be the most hopping thing, if they tied it to a new FPS element, and like I said, we have seen how popular some of those Fortnite, PUBG, whatever games are, that might catch on. And I, I, I still contend that CQC would be actually way more viable of a product for frontier if they would just catch the hint and put missions on the mission board to go do cqc people would go do it mm -hmm. if you gave it some form of a payoff yeah well i and it's missing arcs um well yeah that too yeah i mean lore wise i don't I'm not sure exactly why it would have a payoff because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be sort of a simulation within the game world right sure mm. but it, lore wise yeah. you could literally say hey your faction wants you to show off how cool you are blah 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 <laughs> and you know what i mean like compete show make it a, best. make it a sport yeah, yeah. I, I think astro another huge thing that so during the first dev diary when there was the 10 minute after the dev diary there was a a stream let's call it that the first 10 minutes was an in uh an in interview with david braben mm -hmm. and uh david braben was specifically asked by stephen benedetti what are the things that are coming next and one of the things that he said is that there's going to be various dev diaries coming one of which is going to be on locations like a specific dev diary tied just to locations you think that's the next one it, so while well, on on the stream, Art said specifically, on the next dev diary, we are going to be showing you the inside of a station. Oh. So if that is the case, we can extrapolate that if the next dev diary is the one that is themed on locations and Frontier has already said, we are going to be showing you new locations, both planet side and in space, various locations, I'm really, really curious. What are the possible new locations in space other than starports? Because it's not ship interiors. They've told us that explicitly. I for think now. I think it's installations. My bet is on installations. There so would that be something that would be akin to an EVA where you go off no, to an installation? No, 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 no. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it's EVA. I think basically what it's going to be is um, so. Maybe there's going to be a space uh, element to it where you have to do something in space. Then you maybe you scan it and you figure out just like you have a um, you have all these different points where you can interact with limpets. You got to basically have a docking port. You go up, you dock up to the installation, and then most likely you're going to be fade to black. Ta-da! You're now inside the uh, installation. Um, so okay. instead of a landing pad, you have like yeah. a tube? Yeah, basically like you, you fly up to that thing and when you are within range, then you can then click and say, go in and, mm -hmm. and, and bolt that thing. What they're going to do with the ship in the meantime, I mean, if, if somebody then comes up and says, Lot, I've got to shoot this ship while he's inside, then you come back and you have no ship. Well, I guess the same as if you were in an SRV and somebody shoots your ship. Um, unless, unless they, when you do that docking process, they shunt you into a private... Uh, sort of it's it would be a weird situation where they would shunt your ship into solo mode but keeping you, you into yeah, multi mode yeah. so that you could maybe get shot by other commanders mm. yeah i don't know but i think if they're going to do installations i think it's going to be something like that you fly up and you're going to be able to interact with it and then get inside and from there what's going to happen inside i think could be anything it could be anything from yeah 
um, go shoot him up to maybe more uh, talky investigation type missions or um, I don't know if they're gonna be like uh, straight up just delivery missions go take this box somewhere um, uh, I don't know mm. it would be very interesting because they said multiple new locations right mm -hmm. on land and in space so okay yes. so if we say in space uh, obviously space stations one you say installations do you have any other in space that you're uh, i'd say possibly eva although i i know that it's i, I don't want to get people's hopes <laughs> I, up that's I, a that's a long shot yeah I, I don't think eva um okay i don't know but i just, just do, does anybody else think of any others I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't even going that far <laughs> when I interpreted that. It was like new so, locations, meaning like some somewhere besides the docking bay of a station. OK, I think the hab rings of a station count. I mean, I 100 I, percent I think the hab rings have to be one of the things we can explore because of just the the visual and cinematic mm. part of it to, to not be able to take screenshots on the hab rings. Would be I think a it, total waste. I think it will be done the same way. It will have to be done similar to Star Citizen or pr pretty much any other game that has attempted anything like this. It'll be you from the docking bay, you get in an elevator. That elevator yeah. has multiple options. One of them will be here's the mission gear bear area. Another one is here's the store area. Another one is here's the Kaizen's you know, bar. Yeah, or or or. Here's the uh, garage where you can do, you know, fix up stuff to your whatever. Or here's a gun range where you can try out stuff or whatever. But it, it so I mean, obviously they can't, they can't procedurally generate the entire Orbis. Like one, one Orbis or Coriolis station would be bigger than most other entire games in, right. in map area. Mm. But, but they can give you like eight or nine or five or whatever meaningful zones where like okay yeah, i yeah. take the elevator i go here and now i'm in this world and in this zone i have these options and then when i want to leave here i go back exactly. to the elevator yeah but, exactly but what i'm excited by so that those are the, the areas sort of in space on land was the other thing that was mentioned i think we're going to see some form of you know, from the social hub, I think we're going to maybe see where people will queue up possibly for these joint task missions or whatever, where you will have yeah. people on foot plus people in scooters plus people in ships all doing a coordinated effort on some form of basically the elite dangerous version of a raid where you might have 10 yeah. people or 12 people trying to accomplish a certain mission. And if you have 10 or 12 people trying to accomplish a certain mission, that would mean that Frontier has had to have done considerable work on fixing their instancing and their, <laughs> their you know, ability to do stuff together. Yep. Consistently, right? yeah, fingers crossed on that. I just quickly want to, there's been a few things in the, in the chat I want to, uh, <clears throat> to bring in. Um, first, there was someone who asked uh, who I was talking to. I'm talking to... Um, um, uh, to tracks over from the uh, the loose group elite dangerous podcast and i'm talking to kai from elite week um there was some replies to other locations other than installations somebody said mega ships and somebody mentioned comets Ooh. that would um that would both be uh, be possible options um and also Somebody said crashed ships. I don't think we're going to see walking inside crashed ships because that would mm. mean ship interiors. However, so the open space. stations. Yeah. Mm. Imagine that coming up to basically like a, a Coriolis station just, just hard crashed into the surface of a planet. <laughs> oh. And you can go in, and this has now been used as a as a base for for like bandits or something like that. You have to go in and go pew 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 all the bandits, or go in and Astro. I don't know, look for salvage or whatever. Astro, you're giving me a that. Star Wars boner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh That's what god. I thought of too. <laughs> oh my god, Astro. You know, the about... uh, oh, the oh. talk of of like um being able to explore locations like Dav's Hope and stuff oh, it has been has been thrown about. But I, I Bill honestly, are quite small, aren't they? Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> but by the time we're standing there, we'll we'll see, I guess. But <laughs> I think it it 
it strikes me as that's one that we know the story of, and I, I wonder how much attention that's going to get versus a, you know, capital N new location, but similar. You know, whether it's a crash thing or some kind of surface installation, something that'll have its own lore story um, that we haven't already heard in the logs. There's something inside we can't get to mm. but on foot, so. Mm. That would be awesome. Next year for Halloween, Dab's Hope. You're walking around, it's creepy. <laughs> You know, you, you know what I mean. You got some. Mm. I know the music. Call. The music. Yeah. Yeah. In rock basins, people are mentioning abandoned stations. Mm -hmm. Plenty you, of options. Some, something to keep <clears> in mind, and I don't want to. I don't want to be a wet blanket for anyone with regard to generation ships. But the existing lore of the game does state that one of the very few things that the Pilots Federation and every last one of the major faction superpowers agree on is that messing with a generation ship gets you a death penalty just pointing so that the, out the prime directive it's, yeah. well yeah i mean yeah sort of but like yeah i mean but i mean who's to say that people couldn't you know decide to be naughty and risk it out in the middle yeah. especially if you're talking about the zarara out in the middle of nowhere you know well, there's 16 of them Maybe most of the generation ships had their own death penalty, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Guardian site. I mean, also just walk. Yeah, they're both the guardian sites, but also just walking around inside the Thargoid bases. I think that's a pretty high on my to-do list when the Odyssey hits. Yep. <laughs> well, keep in mind too, the the guardian sites. Many of them have big blast doors. If we're able to right. get out of our scooter and walk over to one of those little side panels and pop it open and hotwire the damn thing and those doors open. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Live guardians, maybe. <laughs> or maybe dead guardians. I don't know. <laughs> well, story. Depends on your definition of live. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess they kind of killed themselves by by that AI yes. thing. They built. So, some, some, some remnant of that maybe left. I may be jumping ahead here but i do want to point out since we're talking about guardians there has been a lot of talk of like oh okay galnet news is back and it's like okay that's interesting and okay we have these new things about these terrorist attacks or whatever and i love all that don't get me wrong i'm not against it but what i love even more is the cheeky little story that they threw in the other day about the halsey investigation is mm. continuing and that they found a guy who is guilty of something and they put him in jail. And where I see this going is that a week from now, a month from now, there'll be another one saying that that guy rolled over on somebody else and, you know, the plot thickens. But the, 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 the important point that I'm making is that they're not just creating new stories, which in and of itself would be awesome. But they're also going back and picking up some of the amazing story loops that sort yeah. of the threads that have just been sitting there forever. Mm -hmm. And the Guardians, the Thargoids, the Halsey thing, the Gan Romero thing. There's a lot of super, super amazing stories that I think are there for them to pick up. And the fact that they chose to include the Halsey story coming back as one of those, I find very intriguing and very, very hopeful. But I think it's also because for the people who may not have played the game that long, Galnet used to be a combination of both pure lore stories that you could yes. basically like a news articles you could follow that would then develop over time. It would basically just be, be in-game stories that gave the game some, some life and some flair. There wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily be anything in-game for you to go and see or do based on those stories. They were mm -hmm. just there for, for flair, for fluff, basically. Yes. Um, and I think Frontier's going back to that. They then, for the longest time, where they basically shut down Galnet, they only made Galnet articles when it had something significant to do that affected players, something that players could go and do and poke with a stick if mm. they wanted to. Mm. I think they're going back and now also doing the more lore stories, which is... They've said, yeah, explicitly yeah. they're going to. So Fluff, Fluff is back on the menu. But they said specifically, and so when they first said that they weren't going to do those lore stories anymore, those flavor stories, people, some people call them fluff, they, they cited the Gan Romero thing and said, well, people were pissed off because they went yeah. looking for Gan ship and they couldn't find it. Mm. Well, they've said specifically they are going to be doing lore stories and concrete stories both, but they were going to do two things. Number one, 
they weren't going to sort of mention a specific place for you to go unless there was a thing there. And two, on the fluff stories, to avoid people being mad from having their time wasted looking for Gan Romero's ship, if it was just a quote unquote flavor story, they were going to go out of their way to make sure that they sort of let you know that in the article. Mm, okay. Which, which is perfect. Do you, do we know what that looks like? I'm I'm curious. I, I feel like that's not one of those immersion breaking things. I think it's sort of too bad. I, I was a little bit, as much as I didn't mind the flavor stories myself, I was a little bit on board with that because there are puzzles tucked into these sometimes it sort of seems like yeah you need to you need to either not do the things not do the ones that don't relate or or to flag them somehow i wonder how the flag looks so they didn't small specific... small icon saying fake yeah. news in the corner <laughs> I would, I would, well so uh, they didn't specifically say but i would think that yeah maybe maybe a little icon <clears throat> just to say you know um political story or something and then mm. that way people know like okay because like you're not going like so you know it's very clear that you're not going to go looking for the nmla who just murdered a ashling's dad like that's just story maybe they could go and say that the stories that have effects on players are going to be listed as breaking news that mm. could be cool that would be a way well, to get around it but the 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 murderer of Ashling's dad doesn't not tie into the game. Like it, it is related to things that sure, it's not something to go find, but it is directly part of the story of. But I, I mean, that's I that's that's the whole point. All of these fluff stories were the fact the Gan Romero story and the Halsey story. Even though yes, there's nothing for you to find, it does inform the the entire galaxy, and it makes the whole story yeah. more immersive. So, but. But specifically, you know, I think the problem that they had or that they they pointed to with the Gan Romero story is that they mentioned a guy in a system in a ship and then people thought, I'm going to be the one to find that ship. So if you notice, you know, they they I think they will continue to tell their stories that but it, they won't say yeah. a guy in a ship in this location. They'll so, just say this right. guy, this guy got murked. Okay. They could solve it in mm. text. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah OK, yeah. I like that. By yeah, not and, giving and they, any, any dedicated systems or places to go, any leads anywhere. Well, if you notice too, they went out of their way in that story to say that seconds after uh, the dude shot Ashling's dad, he was killed by system security. So it's like there's, it's not like you're going to go looking for the dude because <laughs> he's dead. They told you right up front. This story yeah. has a closed loop. The dude, the dude's dead. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, uh, I I gotta duck out, but thanks so much. Thanks um, for dropping by. Good good chat. Hey, congratulations on the wedding. Great Thank to you. talk to you again. Thank you. See you, See you later. See you later. Okay. Um, but no, absolutely great to see Galnet coming back. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, there's a lot of people I know who would just take the Galnet articles and put them on the playlist now that we have text to speak, and just sit and listen to them. Um, Obviously, they haven't really been able to do that after Galnet uh, got shut down. So I think it's great to see it come back. And the fact that they have a dedicated team and they have lost, or like, they have in game events planned until 2022. Right? Mm -hmm. And yes. that's, that's, that's a lot of time. <laughs> more more, more <clears throat> so just than that, but the team that's doing it is answering directly to Lawrence. L Lawrence is the product manager. Uh, sorry, not the product manager. He is the uh, project manager for Elite overall. He is the big Mahat. He is the dude who answers directly to David Braben. So okay. it's not some little side project. It's a fairly, you know, the, the, the leader of that project is the big boss. So mm. I think that's, that's super important. And I see we're at 88 likes. I'm just saying, if we get over <laughs> 100 in the next, say, minute or so, I have a, a crazy theory that I'll share with people. Oh, here comes the conspiracy theories. Tin there foil, we go. Tin foil, yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody, go hit the like button and get your tin for ready because now we gotta get the. Uh, now it's gotta there get real. <laughs> there we are. We're at 104. Okay, so <laughs> here's the deal. Oh, it's still climbing. I think what we're gonna see is that we're seeing the whole Ashling Duvall story of like somebody's murdering 
people in the Empire, including mm-hmm. Ashlyn's dad. We're seeing the Halsey story of like, uh, you know, there was some, and to me, when it, when I first saw the Halsey story, it screamed in my head uh, that season of Babylon Five where the vice president got the president whacked, uh, blew up Starship One, and I was like, all right, I think what we're gonna see here is a whole thing where the Zach Hudson has been doing some false flag shit where he's going around and like murdering um, these these imperial people and blaming it on you know radical separatists or whatever and I think we're going to see a huge storyline where it's like he's been pulling all of these evil strings and he didn't hold the elections last year that the Federation was supposed to have and he didn't he pulled the Trump and <laughs> on, top of, on top of that He's also the you know he they they get proof that he's the one that got Halsey's ship blown up, and we're gonna see like a huge, I think we're gonna see a big power play shift of some kind, and we're gonna see like okay, this this figurehead of this power play group is gone, and there's a new one. I think we're gonna see some exciting stuff, because I actually kind of like that idea. If we begin to see some political events happening in the game uh, between the um... Um, the Federation and the Empire, if they begin mm-hmm. to bash their heads together, and what would then be perfect timing is just as everything is about to <laughs> reach maximum tension between the two, players are engaged in whatever side they want uh, to fight for, and everything is just about to go completely full on civil war uh, in Elite. Into Thargoids. <laughs> yes, that would be great. Because all of a sudden, you have this situation where people need to decide, are we going to put our differences aside and we're going to go and bash those uh, Xenu asses and get them out of here? Or are mm. we just going to keep bashing at each other, basically giving the Thargoids a free reign to just burn the bubble? And then, right, just when people get their shit together and we're all fighting against the Thargoids and we think we've got them, then comes in the Guardian AI. Shit just got real. Yes. Also, or like, there's, there's so much potential there for people also doing shady stuff with, let's say people then decide to go and, and fight together and go and kill some goids. And then all of a sudden you could have Gal- Galish story saying, oh, but this guy here is still running whatever, trying to undermine uh, or better his position or something. Uh, hey. Abermeyer Luther Vaughn, welcome to the family. Thank you, Abermeyer, for uh, for joining us. Remember, it is very much appreciated, and welcome on board. But I think I think there is potential for so many um, so many fun uh, engagements here. Uh, also, I kind of think pitching people like pitching the player group against each other, like not directly splitting the community. I mean, there's there's a chance it's gonna get hateful. Um, but it can also create a lot of fun content if you are, if you have two groups of people who have different interests fighting a community goal on either side. That could be very cool. Now, I haven't paid attention to the community goal that's running right now, but okay. it's revolving, as far as I've been able to gather, um, it's... It hasn't started yet. Okay, so there's one that is... Okay, because what, what possibly was, so there were the stations, Yes. and they exploded, and people yes. thought it was Thargoids because Thargoid tech was used, but so, it was not, right? Yes, well, no, it was. So, okay, so so here's the chronology of how that all happened, mm-hmm. you were away. Thursday morning early for America, attacks happened on four stations. Right. Then, about uh, 15, 20 minutes later, there was a news bulletin put out saying that it was Thargoid attacks. Yes. Then the Thargoids had attacked those four stations and they were in incursion, those systems. Then about a half hour after that, that story was yanked back. It was retracted. Mm -hmm. Then shortly after it was replaced by the the new Galnet story, which said that it was not Thargoid attack, but that it was the NMLA, this this, uh, Neo-Marlin Liberation Army. Okay. Then um later that day was the stream where the the frontier talked about it and they said that was not by accident we wanted to sort of yeah, um, yeah. 
yeah, <clears throat> we wanted it to be like confusing for people. And that makes sense. That also yeah. how it, I mean, right after something like that happens, there's gonna be a lot of confusion and there's bound to be some, sure, some wrong assumptions there. But so just go no, ahead. no. So so what what possibly was because obviously now we have burning stations, so people are like hauling passengers out of the stations to uh, to rescue ships, right? Mm -hmm. But I've seen posts in in various locations by various people. I don't believe it's just one guy. I believe it's actually a thing going on where people are saying, oh, those people on those stations that have been uh, uh, attacked with those Thargoid tech, they are infected with some Thargoid virus. And everybody that should, sorry? Could be. Yeah, and, and, and they have been encouraging people to go in and if they see any passenger ships or anyone trying to fly people out of those stations, they need to be killed on sight. I think that that's people that are trolling and having fun Gankers, okay, but... I just wasn't sure if that was part of the of the because I have again I haven't paid attention to you, to no. uh, to the uh, to the community yeah. role yet. But that's kind so of that fun. Is... If that is that's player driven, that's kind of fun actually. Yes, that is entirely trolly, trolly, troll. That's not anything tied to the story officially. Mm. Um, what is tied to the story officially, and what Frontier have said is that yes, that is corrosive damage that you're seeing on the station, and and it is not on purpose it's or i mean it is not by accident it's on purpose so now keep in mind that i as a random commander one of you know theoretically billions in the verse i can get thargoid corrosion uh materials and put them on my multi-cannon shells and on my missiles so who's to say that terrorists couldn't also get them and put them onto a bomb I mean, taking a few hundred metric tons of Thargoid materials and flying it into a station is, well, kids play these days. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, so it is, though, I think a, a step up, um, I think for, for any, and I won't give any spoilers because I do not want anybody to, 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 you know, be mad at me about it because it's so great. But for anyone who's read The Expanse or watched the show and is current, there's a similar situation there where you have a, a group, a terrorist slash freedom fighter group who is using tech that is not theirs. And it's a situation where I think it's, and in, the, in that literally in where they're at with the show right now uh, with the seasons is they're like investigating it, trying to figure out, put the pieces together of what, what that group is doing. Hmm. I think we have a very similar thing here where Frontier is giving us a mystery of these guys did not have access to this tech before. Where the hell did they get it? And we're going to have a series of CGs or whatever where we investigate and we have to yeah. Scooby do it and find out what the hell's going on. I wish you all along. Hot <laughs> that was so. <laughs> what Dogan also just said. Imagine UA bombing was still a thing. This is basically the UI bomb of all UI bombs. <laughs> UA bombs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and again, for, for newer players, maybe I should clarify, UA is uh, short for uh, Unknown Artifact, which was mm -hmm. what Thargoid sensors used to be called before we know they were Thargoid sensors. And you used to be able to haul Unknown Artifacts into station in mass and sell them to the station, which would basically cause the whole station to shut down because of corrosion damage. Yeah. Um, and you could also, if you were had really fun, because the the UAs, I think they still do that actually. Um, if you put them into space and honk them, they will sit down, sit out a, um, a a shutdown pulse, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's a weird, uh, it's a it, it it's a weird signal that you can run through a spectrogram and get. No, but they okay. So one of them at least used to be able to send out a a shutdown pulse that shuts down your ship for just like a few seconds. Um, and I know people in the past used that to fly up to a station open, jettison it, fire off the uh, the detail cell, the, 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 the honk basically, so that it fired off that pulse, and every ship at the station just boom, shuts down. Right on. But I don't think people do that. I, don't, I haven't heard anyone doing that lately. I don't know if you still can do that <laughs> at all, but it's pretty hilarious. Mm. Uh, I think we should. Uh, I think we should check the chat and see yes, I'm actually who's reading. got cool questions. And I think I I like the idea of let's start with 
uh, Abermeyer Luther Vaughn, who just became a member, and let him ask a question. We have questions. Go ahead and yeah. them. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The pulse wave issues. Do you find any? Ah, yes. So you you may not have heard of this yet, uh, Astro. Basically, right now there is a problem that many people have uh, put on the the issue tracker. If you go and you use the pulse wave, it, yeah. some people are mistakenly thinking that it lights up the rocks behind you. It does not. What it is is there seems to be some glitch, some server lag, and as a result, it lights up rocks, but like sometimes maybe after three or four pulses, like way late. So as a oh. result, what people are finding is when they pulse and they look behind them, it's the rocks lit up that are behind them. But that's just because they're moving and because of the server lag it the rocks that are applicable are now behind you but uh we've independently tested it and if you stay motionless they will eventually light up if you go sort of fly in a circle then you will see them it's not just the ones behind you it's just a server lag situation but it has been reported by many 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 people it is a vast topic of mining conversation these days okay no i have completely missed that again i've been it's new pretty much uh offline for the last week and a half but okay i'm, I'm pretty sure again i i i haven't been uh, been keeping up to date on it but it sounds like an outright bug there could be no doubt about that it's a bug mm -hmm. so that's probably gonna get fixed and especially if there's been a lot of noise around it then yeah i would say probably sooner than later um so do you want to do you want to tackle to George's question to George, what is Rax what law? is okay so actually when we when we're talking about like stuff to explore and we were talking about that whole um um the the, the tip off so a lot of people are asking or mentioning Raxler at that point now what exactly Raxler is i don't know and i don't think that Raxler will require us to get out on foot if Raxler even exists i have my doubts but if it even exists then I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to find it without going to a um, to a planet at all. Because there's been oh. talk about Raxler before Horizons. Uh, I got to say, I would strongly disagree with you there, uh, uh, Astro. Yeah, just, because, just, just because the fact that I, I, I sort of agree with you in the end, but I think in order to get through the Raxla mystery, if and when Frontier puts it in the game as an interactable item, it makes total sense for to me that one of the steps of the process will be you have to sneak into a building and pull some code out of a drawer somewhere or something, just because for them it's a no-brainer to put their new thing that you have to pay to get a chance to see make that a wall that you have to go behind because that way all the people that want Raxla are now going to pony up 40 bucks. Yeah, okay. But I, I, I sort of also agree with you that it's but not really then, findable right now. Then you could argue that, that oh, well, I think Raxla can be found then without it, but there might be okay. more than one way leading to Raxla then. That Maybe. is very... Because... If it exists, I would assume that it would be able to be something you could find um, from the get-go, right? From when Elite was was first created, right? Again, coming back to the, the similar conversation that you and I have shared a couple of times before, the fact of the matter is, is I believe it's going to be locked behind some form of a permit, and so that way, it's technically there from the beginning of the game. They didn't lie. But you don't want. have a chance in hell of finding it without that permit, you know? And that's how they sort of make it to where people have to jump through hoops to get there and not just one random dude trips over it and goes, hey, look, it's a Raxla. <laughs> Can I have two, please? <laughs> um, yeah, okay, I don't know. But I, I, I mean, I've pretty much seen as many theories on Raxla as I've been talking mm -hmm. to people about it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you want me to give a brief explanation as I as I see it? Yeah, by all means. In the 1984 version of the game Elite, they gave a novel that went with it called The Dark Wheel. 
and the story of the Dark Wheel, this little 26-page novella, which you can find online for free, just Google it. Um, it has the story of Raxla, and Raxla is this mythical alien gateway, and it's very, very vague as to what it is. Some people say it's a planet, some people say it's just an idea, some people say it's a very small thing. They're, they they never given a direct answer on that in 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 uh, in lore for this game, and apparently, the idea is that gateway is supposed to allow you to access either another galaxy or another dimension or some other. It's supposed to be like a stargate that takes you elsewhere. We don't know where yet, and that there are people, there are humans that now know and and have access to that stargate. And they're going through it to the other place and getting super rich off of the resources. And that group of people jealously guards that secret. And if you get close to it, they murder you. So right. that is the sort of, I think, the best way you could say what Raxla is. So all who, of which who has been mysteriously been murdered in the last 200 years. <laughs> uh, Ashlyn's dad. Yes. <laughs> so what was he doing right before he died? Look at, uh, let's go there and do the same thing. <laughs> but no, everybody has been, well, everybody, a lot of people have been looking for Raxler and yes, so far nothing, but who knows? There's uh, some people right now that are involved in a project that is looking I've, for I've, it. I've heard about it. <laughs> is I, that something you know anything about? <laughs> it seems disreputable at the, at the very least. Uh, there, so I, I am uh, a part of a project called the Dark Wheel, uh, Turning the Wheel Initiative. And we have a theory that because of the story uh, involved the Dark Wheel in the novella, the group, the Dark Wheel, were the ones that were searching for Raxla. Uh, a, a little pet theory of mine is that maybe you need a permit to, to access Raxla to get continue the mystery and maybe that permit is obtained by helping the Dark Wheel to spread across the galaxy. So we are uh, right now in the process of, we, we've spread it from, it was only in two systems, now it's in six systems, it's about to be in seven, and we're close, we're one jump away from testing what happens when the Dark Wheel tries to move into Sol, into the Earth system. Oh, you're and that we're close. Gonna, okay. Yes. And then we're we're actually also 19 light years away from Lave, which uh, I'm going to go out and on a limb and say that Terex may have been uh, in the in the old worlds recently. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're 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 one of your we're going to be one of your new neighbors. So, hello. Hello. Um, we'll come by and ask for salt or something. Well, Is we that will what you do with neighbors. We will gladly lend salt or sugar to Terex because uh, uh, you, Terex is a, is, has been a friend to us all along, and and we would choose to do the same for you. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, so we're testing out stuff, but. Also, because That's so it, for the for the non BTS savvy, uh, BTS is short for background simulation, and that is whenever you go into a system, you will go to the mission board. You will see a number of factions. Those factions can be influenced by running those missions, and you can cause them to leave a system or to expand into new systems or to take control or to lose control of systems. There's a lot of stuff you can do there. Um, and there's a whole, like, the rules around how this works is basically learned by trial and error. This is not written down. Frontier haven't given us anything on it. This is something that the community has discovered on its own. And what is interesting now is what Kai at the Turning the Wheel project is doing is trying to see if all those rules that apply to quote-unquote normal factions, if those rules also apply to the Dark Wheel. Because there might be that they have some special thing they can do with that faction that you can't do with others. For instance, expanding into soul. That is not possible from a, uh, a normal faction's uh, perspective because it's a permit lock system. You can't expand into a permit lock system. Mm -hmm. But the Dark Wheel being who they are, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. And, and, and to be clear, this is all just testing hypotheses. We're not saying it's going to work. We're saying we're having fun, we're flying around, and we're pew pewing in spaceships, and we're seeing, we're, we're testing the theory. Yes. Um, 
But getting back to the the theme of the show tonight for for uh, Odyssey stuff, um, I want to ask you I, I, again. You were away, so I don't know what you caught and what you didn't catch. Did you notice uh, Astro when they tweeted when Frontier tweeted on Wednesday of last week and said that? Um, they were going to they, they answered two big issues the first was they will have vr on mm. odyssey yes, right from that. the beginning on all of the flying and seated bits and that it will be an easy transition to get to flat screen you don't have to reboot which is awesome much love to the entire team yeah, but you get a flat screen in vr basically right? and that was the same one yes correct you'll get yeah. flat screens and you can also take off your helmet and then go straight to to or visor and go straight to you know pancake mode regular but um that's super super awesome and that was the same place where they said about the uh no ship interior but station interior and mm -hmm. other locations on land and in space question mark um but in that tweet that they put out a tweet first to say go to the forums to look at the forum post yeah the tweet was a very very close up of a little piece of a ship over a, a ring, over like a, a planetary ring. Um, I I theorized on Elite Week last last Friday. Uh, I was like, "Hey, did they just show us a little piece of a new ship and like bury it where nobody would be able to?" Wait, what? Sort of. Yeah, I was like, "Why the hell would they show us such a close up of a ship, of a piece of a ship?" Is that a new ship that they showed us in that tweet? If you go to the yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter account for I'm, Frontier, I'm pulling it up on uh, on stream here in a second. Just give me a give me a minute. I'll I'll find it. <laughs> just by I, browsing I, and now the I screen. Think, I think it it may be that it's just a close up of a you know oh hey there's maybe a piece of a uh, of a crate maybe could be theoretically but it's so weird that they would take a, that important of a post. And post it on a picture of a ship, and it's such a weird little close-up picture. That's not it. That one. That's right? not it. That's not. That's that not it. I think it's uh, back. Oh, it's stream delay. That one. That one right there. That's by the struggling. Yes. What is that? Uh, it could be a crate, maybe. Maybe. No. No. Okay. How long? Okay. I'm, I'm in a crate. Uh, crate phantom though. What is that? It's so weird that they would choose to. No, no, that it's picture. right here. Look at that. It's right here. It's that, right here, right? I think. I think maybe. Isn't that the vents? So that's like, some vents, and then they become smaller, and then they come out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I. It's the, I it's the, you. it's the tail, it's the tail end of a crate phantom. It's just such a weird choice. I don't believe I can get the camera that close, though. I can't get the camera into that actual position. And I can't see chat right now, so there's some wire stuff going on up there. Yeah, you can see new, the wires see, here. Little yeah, triangle Nathan, there. And Nathan see, just said new crate, and then NASA Watt just said crate 3. What if they give us a new crate variant? I think that I think that's the uh, the rear end of, uh, of a crate phantom. Okay. That was lucky that I was happened to be flying a great phantom. If, if Astro in the next year they come out with a crate Mark Three, oh. we're all gonna be going. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they would do that, but it would be neat. It'd be weird. But okay, I would, I would be surprised if we're not gonna see new, new ships at some point. Um, oh, for sure. I mean. New SRVs, yes, please. That's almost a given. They haven't said anything about it at all, but so I, they've given out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying it's it's. I would be very surprised if they didn't put in new SRVs. It, it just seems like such an obvious thing to do now. So they've very strongly hinted at both. So Luke Betterton, in his uh, interview with I forgot, I, I think maybe is it IGN. He did a, uh, one of the five articles, big articles that's been talked about recently. Mm -hmm. He was specifically asked, will you put in new SRVs? 
and he literally said, oh, we can't talk about it just yet, but there'll be lots of new ways to get around, which, I mean, yes. Yes, hover bikes. Did not technically say it. He did not technically say it, but he was basically handing out tinfoil mm. <laughs> and said, make your own. Um, by and by Beatles, yeah. Um, on Thursday, on, on Thursday, uh, they were asked, the community management team, Bruce and Art, were specifically asked, are there going to be new ships in Odyssey? And I, ch I'm, I tell you, go back and watch the video. They both stop. They smile right at the screen. And uh, Bruce says, we can't yet confirm any new ships. We're not allowed or something to say yet. Like, that's not an answer you give if the answer is no. Yes, new ships. Yes, new ships. Of course, new ships. You don't make a, a video game where you sell people on the idea that they can fly spaceships in a galaxy, then ask them for 40 more dollars and tell them no spaceships for you. You, of course, give them new ships. That's how you sell product. I mean, they also... Hmm. Question is what type of ships they are, because if it depends what the goal for Frontier is. If their goal is to say we want to have 95 of people playing actively today converted over to Odyssey, we want everybody to buy the Odyssey update. Mm -hmm. Then, well, new ships is going to give the people without Odyssey something a lot to do. So maybe those of the ships are going to be more focused towards, I don't know, planet side things. Yes. I don't know how we would make a ship dedicated for that. Maybe so we get here, new modules or something like that. I don't know. I'm thinking, first off, I'm thinking the Federal Dropship will finally not be a piece of crap. I'm thinking we'll get some modules that will make it a sort of dedicated dedicated hot drop, close air support, kind of like a, a cross between an Osprey and an A-10, where, you know, you have uh, some ground modules that, you know, are, are able, like air-to-ground weaponry that's able to be sort of targeted smartly. Mm -hmm. Um uh, and then also have, like I said, troop, like some kind of advanced troop deployment uh, characteristics, like special thrusters or something that work in on planet, like like in gravity. Well, that are hover, more hover, towards hover thrusters or something. Some 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 special, whatever. And so yeah, I think what we're going to see, I think we're going to see if we see maybe say three or four new ships, right? I think we're going to see seventy five percent of them sort of geared towards the idea of something to do with like the planet side part like have something to do with it yeah, or yeah. or just four new ships and then new modules with that but i think the, 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 to be smart i think they should throw sort of one bone of of not planet side of more whatever yeah so, i mean yeah, yeah. there are some the, people the, saying I, a large uh, a large uh, alliance ship I, mean, I would love to see a large alliance next. Well, you remember I interviewed you over a year ago, uh, Astro, and I said the large alliance exploration ship would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Some, some, something to knock the anaconda off the throne of being like the best at everything. <laughs> so a while back, there was a there was a discovery scanner episode with two young gentlemen that are designers for Elite five. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? There's people oh, in chat Mark that goes, goes oh, Cobra Mark 5. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so a while ago, there was a Discovery Scanner episode about the crate, the crate Mark II specifically, when the crate was introduced. And they had these guys, these two guys that I haven't really seen much before or after, that are there in the sort of ship design group. And at the beginning of that video, that Discovery Scanner, I, I highly recommend people go back and look at it. Uh, they were asked, like, how do you guys go from concept to actual ship? And mm -hmm. they said, well, for start, they pulled up this map and it was a list of ships from the old Elite game. Yeah. And they were like, we take something like this. And then from there, we try to fit what what the, what's the, the spice, what's its role going to be? And then what are the interesting characteristics of this ship as compared, compared to other ships? When they started that whole thing, they showed a little roadmap thing there. And some of the ones that jumped out to me that were there, there weren't a whole lot that weren't done over yet. Um, you had the Boa, the Gecko, and the Moray 
what is it, the Moray Starliner or Moray whatever. And the Moray was the one that was a special, like, it goes underwater boat or ship, mm. spaceship. Um, the Boa was, I, if, unless I'm mistaken, I believe it was sort of a, a more sort of combat-y type variant of a Python type whatever. So a Crate Mark II. Well, I mean, you know, but when people are looking to say like, hey, what ships do you think they'll bring? I, I look at, I tend to look at, well, when Frontier in the past has explained how they made new ships, let's look at what they say and then yeah, sort of makes extrapolate. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> people are going to chat, less snakes, please. <laughs> so in the reason for the snake naming convention, for those who don't uh, know, in the previous Elite games, all of the combat focused ships were pretty much named after snakes. And then there were the trade ships were named after like cats. So you had the Panther Clipper, you had the uh, Puma something, you had the Lion something. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was like there was a weird cl classification system, and, and the, the most of the combat y ones were snakes. How, and I think. How, the, how's Cat Mark 7? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, they seem to have gone a little bit away from that. <laughs> the mysterious <Yeah>. type 8. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. So we were talking about the, in the original game, people asking, like, the Asps scouts if that was a combat ship. Um, I think we're talking about the uh, back of the original game, not Elite Dangerous. Um, definitely have different roles here. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> no, There's people, a lot of ships people, though where they. they yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, just people were really talking about the snake thing. Um, <laughs> get all the people on uh, on on uh, on Twitch. <laughs> I probably can't uh, can't read that message out loud, um, but mm. I like it. Um, yeah. No, it's okay, but. I, I'm interested in what they're going to do with the SRVs. Mm. Um, I'm, hope see yeah. oh, go ahead. No, I'm hoping we're going to see something like... When, okay, so I, see, I can see them going two paths. Either to just make new SRVs. So that could be like a cargo-focused SRV or a um, more... A faster SRV maybe or a combat sure. like mini tank slow sure. or something like that right sure um where the current SRV is gonna be like the the mid all rounder do a little bit sure. of everything kind of thing alternatively mm. they completely rework it, SRVs so mm. that it's now more of a modular thing that you cannot build like a ship oh how, how about I blow your mind Astro ready mm -hmm. por que no los dos why not they come out with uh, in Spanish. Why not both? Yeah. Why not? How come? What, maybe they have. I would love to see a dump truck SRV that's used for yeah. mining stuff. I would love to see a hover bike SRV that's a light recon ship. Uh, or, or sorry, skimmer. Uh, you, I want. I want to fly a skimmer. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see a, as you say, a tactical <clears throat> assault SRV, and then the base model, and then on top of that, I would like to see SRVs maybe get four or five module slots and you can deck out an SRV. Now, I would say maybe your SRVs get four or five module slots and then like say the tank SRV gets seven, but they're military, like six of them or five of them are military compartments. Maybe the light skimmer speeder bike SRV only gets three, but it has more speed and agility as a trade-off. Yeah. And then uh, the dump truck miners best friend SRV gets you know, six or seven internal slots, but like four of them are, are are directly tied to cargo so that you cannot really make an effective combat miner or an effective trade tank. You yeah. have to sort of do the roles that they're supposed to do. Or maybe it's just, I mean, maybe all all you can fit is just the external tools. Like you don't have internal tools, like uh, you only have basically hard points on them. So you can say, oh, you want a, a plasma repeater, or you want like a laser weapon, or do you want a mining laser on it, or do you want a scanner on it, or something like that. 
So you say that the in this theory that you're saying the internals will be locked. So the cargo one, like the minor one, will already have good cargo. Exactly. The combat one will already have good by default hull, and 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 the hard points are the variables. That could be awesome. Yeah, but and, then again, if if you think about it, actually, that it wouldn't make sense because you would never in that situation you would never go and fit a mining laser on the combat vehicle unless you want to go combat mining. The, the cargo is going to be bad probably. Um, so, so it's like, if there's no, if there's no, if, if the choice is like, air quote choice, that yes, you, yeah. you could fit a mining laser, but that would be absolutely stupid to do so. Sure. You could put a mining laser on a vulture. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. True. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, I think that that would be, I think that would be lovely. And, and, and more so to extrapolate out, I would also love to see, uh, engineering for those SRVs. I can put advanced shocks or advanced boosters or whatever. That would be cool. All for spacesuits. That's a whole nother topic. Um, As well. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And I would like to see... So Frontier specifically stated, um, and I, I caught this in the first live letter when they showed to... Uh, hey, official Cranky Hank. Welcome to the following whatever thing. Uh... Frontier said in the live stream, like, we're showing you multiple suits. They didn't say both. They said multiples. Mm. And then, and I called that out. And then on the live stream on Thursday, Art specifically said, there are multiple suits. I'm not saying there's two. I'm not saying there's any number. I'm not going to tell you right now. Uh, but there will be more stuff to see as we go forward. Yeah. And he specifically stated that those suits are not it's not that you're seeing the man suit and the woman suit. No, no, no. Like, it's not that's like it's not your bikini male, role. basically. So you know, you could see a recon suit. You could see a combat recon suit. You could see a pure exploration suit. You could see a full-on assault combat suit. So like, the assault combat would be the bulkier, but with like the heavier armor. Mm. The assault, the the recon uh, assault armor would be like a mix between sort of lighter, more maneuverable, but still have more armor than say the yeah, but long, longer oxygen tanks it seems like sure. actually having to sit and monitor your oxygen is going to be a thing you're going to run out of oxygen eventually and you're going to suffocate and die if you don't get back to an oxygen source um and i i'm i'm one of those and i don't mean to be a wet blanket but i am a little bit uh i'm i'm a little weary on the on the the survival mechanics i'm okay with a little bit of that but don't overdo it because if you go too realistic you, you're gonna suck the fun out of it yeah i can definitely yeah i would agree with that don't go i would have to try and draw parallels here to star citizens because they actually implemented survival mechanics where you have to remember to eat and drink yeah and it doesn't add a lot to the game other than an annoyance that you have to remember sometimes when you're at a station anyway to go and buy food. I can, it's dumb. Yeah, yeah. It, I can see it could add something if you begin to implement, like, if you're out exploring for a very long time, then it makes sense, right? But for the day-to-day -day life when you live in the bubble, it doesn't make sense in a game that you have to worry about uh, eating. It doesn't even really make sense if you're out exploring for a while, because the fact of the matter is, is our ships are so damn big that if you're surviving off of protein bars, you could look behind you that door and say, OK, on the other side of that door, I've got 400 tons of protein bars. Like, <laughs> you're never going to run out. Matt. So I think if we've got, so I don't think they're going to go that far. It's not like, OK, you have to go and remember to get your eight hours of sleep every day and you have to eat your food and you have to take your toilet breaks and that kind of stuff i i think what we're gonna see in terms of survival mechanics is gonna be you need to go and i think it's just gonna be you need to go and get oxygen from time to time basically like you have fuel on your srv mm. and I, we can always synthesize some iron into more oxygen i don't know how that works but <laughs> yeah. i think they're going to transpose all of the existing survival mechanics from elite ships into elite suits so for with regard to okay so you have with your ship you have to keep your hull up so you with your suit you have to keep your say your your uh what do you want to call it 
cons- not consistency what your your um your hull of your suit you have to keep it mm. uh, uh i'm blanking on the word you have to keep it intact you can't have it punctured no exactly with, with regard to ships you have to have your fuel okay your fuel i think is going to equate to your battery in your sh- in your suit and your battery is what allows you to make you know whatever you're going to have oxygen you're going to have you know radiation to worry about and the radiation though will be one of those hand wavy things where they say well so long as your suit has power it's regulating that it's doing that job yeah yeah, yeah. and if you begin if your suit takes damage then you may be going to leak oxygen faster or whatever sure and again radiation protection could also be a thing um that would work reasonably well so if you want to go into what do i know a, a, a you find a cave you dive into the cave i'm crossing my fingers here and you have to remember to take a suit that has proper radiation protection otherwise you're gonna get radiation sickness and die mm. i mean there, there are plenty of options for what you could do um with something like that i think and then and then we'll eventually see the fuel rats create an augmentation group called the battery bunnies that show up in a cave and plug you in because you're low yeah <laughs> well longest extension cord <laughs> oh and i'm seeing people in the chat i'm seeing crazy are we going to be able to live on venus obviously referencing the news that, yeah, that just yeah. came out the other day yeah okay so now that now that it's brought up the whole venus thing mm. there's a lot of hype about it Yep. And it's way overhyped compared to what it is. Yep. We found what what they found is they found some material that we here on Earth only see being produced in the stomach of penguins or in a swamp, basically like oxygen poor environments, right? So their and argument what... is is oh we only see these like bacterias that produce these in living things. So there must be also be bacteria in the atmosphere that produce these things. You have to remember that they haven't proven that those are there. They just say, we found this element. Maybe there's going to be some other process that we are not familiar with yet that can produce that um, that element somehow. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, do not believe Astro. He is lying to you. Yes. <laughs> he knows that there are penguins on Venus and he's keeping the truth from you. It's true. <laughs> Space space penguins. Mm-hmm. Confirmed. We have someone asked, what's the name of this game? We're playing Elite Dangerous today and chit-chatting. They have, uh, what is it, Pengu in Star Citizen? Now you know where Pengu is. He's hanging out on Venus. <laughs> Venus. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was a really fun addition, by the way. Yeah. Pe- penguin conspiracy. Oh, by the way, uh, David Braben, if you happen to be listening and you do put in survival mechanics of eating and sleeping a please don't but if you do don't go the star citizen route and say that you can walk by a million vending machines but you can only buy food at the bookstore because that doesn't make sense sense. i i think the whole eating mechanics in star citizen is they've implemented it as a test um as where it is now and i think obviously it's it's not a finished feature because yes there's a lot of stores you can walk by but you can't buy anything you have to go to that vending machine in the corner to uh, to to get your food and drinks but i don't know it's probably not the thing thing the first thing i would implement in an alpha um but it's there and it's it's a minor inconvenience as it is right now it's yeah penguins equals (laughs) raxla confirmed now I want a pink one I can put on uh, on my dashboard of the ship. Uh, let me see what we have here. So what do you think they're going to show us for location-wise at the when they show us the new thing, I think, next week or the week after? So if we go from what we saw in the first one, I don't think we're going to be seeing gameplay. I don't think we're going to be seeing a character walk around the station. I hope I'm wrong. Oh, he said, he uh, Art said specifically, you will see first person view of a guy walking around in the station. Okay, well, I'm glad to be proven wrong then. <laughs> Where did I put this? Oh, there we go. Um, I agree with you though. We won't see gameplay mechanics. 
but I think what we'll see is some things that hint at like we can try to like break come crumb it out. So what I'm af afraid of is we're going to end. One of the things that I that I have we also talked about it on the last um, the last <clears throat> the last roundtable is what they did. I think they did it well. They really left you hungry for more. I was like. After seeing the first dev diary, I had more questions than than was answered during that dev diary. There were so many questions, like, but but you can't stop there. <laughs> yeah. um, so I would, I've, and we also talked about last time. I would love them to see diving into more details. I don't mm. think they're going to do it. I think this is already pretty much completely planned. What they're going to show in each dev diary all the way up to launch. Mm -hmm. But I would still wish they would dive into a little bit more details instead of doing these very broad dev diaries where we say we're just going to basically skim the surface, just give you a sneak peek of what's there. I would much rather say, OK, hey, today we're going to look at only stations, nothing else, not surface, not anything, just just stations. I know that would mean if they had to go through all the content they want to show in the dev diaries, they would have to pump out one every week or something. Um, but I just but I just know that after the dev diary, when it comes out, I would be stuck with more questions uh, than answers. And uh, basically it just, because I'm so curious, I want to see I if I go into a station, uh, what's there going to be there other than, I mean, it's okay if they show us around, say, look how pretty it is. But mm -hmm. I also want to know what can I do there? And I hope they're going to answer that question. It's going to talk about what kind of activities you're going to be able to do these and not just going to be you can do this and this and more <laughs> if, if that makes sense because then i'm always like what is more yeah i i i have a sinking suspicion that you're going to be a little you're, I, you're I, I, know, hungry for facts I know why i'm gonna be and mm. it's just because I've, i mean i want artists yesterday basically as it is right now um i'm looking forward to it a lot and i think i'm gonna enjoy the hell out of that uh, that update um and i, I can't i can't wait for, i can't wait for the pizzas i have good news for you astro mm -hmm. if you remember uh during the last round table when we talked i said why did they use the term odyssey maybe it's because <clears throat> you know odyssey is famous as being the greatest story ever told yep. maybe there's going to be some big aspect of storytelling or whatever they just so hired a whole story writing team so that would make sense maybe if they just yeah had a big team right and then they took that team and they had them report directly to lawrence so that they had power to actually affect change and mm -hmm. then they had that team do galnet articles that would be cool and then they also had that team do in-game events and seasonal events and cgs the first one is coming this week uh if i had to guess i would say probably something they could talk about on their next stream in two days um most likely yeah yeah so what if when you say you're ready for odyssey to come today what if frontier last week gave you a honeymoon gift while you were away a wedding gift of they started odyssey early and they're giving you galnet stories and cgs and events and all kinds of stuff before odyssey even drops what if i could tell you that astro would you buy that for a dollar yeah but it still doesn't give you space lakes <laughs> <laughs> but i know astro, i know i know what they're doing right now they're building up the story they want to have that's going to be right around launch mm -hmm. um because i think i think the way for just going to do the odyssey launch and this is just pure guesswork is they're going to be slowly building up hype so they, we're going to get more and more surprise features or surprise like big things shown as we get closer and they're slowly begin to ramp up the stories mm -hmm. um and then right at the launch right as odyssey drops some massive in-game events happen at the same time agree so that will be articles both trying to showcase all the different things going on with uh, with just the fact that we can now walk around but also all the stories is going to get covered elite is going to be everywhere um i think i think at least that's what Frontier is hoping for what they're aiming for yeah um, with, i agree with all of that with one addendum mm -hmm. i think there's going to be a special information orgy that's going to happen tied right to you know a week before or or the week of 
uh, pre-orders. So yeah. I, I'm excited. Right. Whenever Frontier pre-orders. says, oh, by the way, pre-orders are going to be available as of, you know, October 15th or whatever. I'm going to be sitting there with popcorn because I'm telling you the week of October 15th then will be amazing shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. how marketing works. Yes. <laughs> Now, but again, when okay, so let's let's now that we are we've been in, been in, been tinfoil hatting and speculating all night. So, what's your guess? When are we gonna see a um, when are we gonna see uh, the first beta, public beta for um, for Odyssey? I think we'll see the first beta beginning of November. Oh, that early. And we'll see. And we'll see a second beta. I think we'll see a good chunk of time between the betas. I think we'll see the first beta beginning of November. November. I think we'll be see second beta end of November, jumping into beginning of December. Mm-hmm. And so they'll take a good chunk of time to try to address actual stuff and, and solicit a lot of feedback and whatever. And then I think we will see Odyssey launch as a product for you to buy and play live some point mid-January. I would say, like, like the weekend of the fifteenth. So, so that you know, the the not yeah, okay. not the fifteenth day, but that week. I I I I pretty much have everything just pushed about uh, a month. I think okay. we're gonna see beaters around start December because they're not gonna be running any uh, public beaters over Christmas. Even though it would make sense, kind of say, okay, let's put the beta out of people play. In reality, what often happens during beta is there's going to be hot fixes. Work. There's going <laughs> to yeah. they, they have a lot of work to do doing these. Like yeah. people are going to come with feedback. They need to have community managers uh, on standby to reply to uh, to collect all the feedback, make mm-hmm. sure we get replies out. Like two weeks of radio silence from Frontier over Christmas and New Year's doing a, a beta period is not going to work. So I don't think that's going to be a beta running over um, over Christmas. Agree. And it's probably going to be running for like two weeks. So that's why I was thinking, okay, so start December, then they have like at least another week to um, to go and, and uh, like fix the box that have been discovered doing that. Everybody's off on Christmas, come back in the new year, um, then they get ready mid January. We see the second beta, and then sometimes maybe mid February. In February, we're going to uh, we're going to see uh, an actual launch. Um, people ask me if it's going to be a paid beta. So that's actually an interesting question. No. Would you? No, I don't think it's going to be paid. I think it's going to be open. But yes. Then they would essentially also then be using it as like the teaser of all teasers because if they're going to give everybody access, even people who yes. haven't bought it then you're just like yeah so the first hit is free right <laughs> yes it's a, a so so you want to have it as an open beta for two reasons or beta as the british say for two reasons the first is number one test <laughs> you want to market the hell out of everybody and yes like you just said like a drug dealer the first hit is free and then you'll come back and give me 40 bucks because you want that sweet sweet walking around yeah and number two you want as many people as possible so that you can crash your shit, find out where all the problems are, and get them fixed. Mm. So that if beta, if betas crash four or five times, it's no big deal. Betas be beta. Yeah. If a live product <laughs> crashes on launch day, well, that's way embarrassing. Let's be honest, though. It's still going to because that's how MMOs work. But okay, I can tell you, want you. as little as possible. I, I can tell you now. Launch day for Odyssey. <laughs> it's gonna be basically lock-in simulator. Like yeah. I think it was. Huh, what update was that? Was that the first Beyond update? I think, where I was trying to live stream the day, and there were like hundreds and hundreds of people in uh, in in the stream. Uh, like I think it was like five hundred plus people sitting, watching, and you play for like five minutes, you get kicked out, and then you sit there for like twenty minutes with a spinning ship. You try to get in. I ended up live streaming Minesweeper while <laughs> trying to lock in. <clears throat> so surreal moment sitting there with like hundreds of people watching you play Minesweeper <laughs> while you were trying to lock in. Like... I'll tell you this for nothing, uh, uh, Astro. Login day, first day of 
beta or not beta first day of launch of mm. odyssey is going to basically be a free commercial for lemnus gate because everybody's going to be watching you play in 25 second increments <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I i'm pretty sure as, as always is you need to have if you're going to be live streaming on patch days you need to have a backup plan. What do you do when things not work? What do you do if you get stuck or if you just can't log in because of server load? Mm. And there is almost nothing you can do to to prevent it from Frontier's side. No, no, I mean, 100%. But I, I know they are, are, they, are they running Amazon, Amazon Cloud? For, they are, they're running Amazon Web, uh, AWS, Amazon Web Service. Yeah, exactly, so they could I guess do a temporary scale up of login servers, but even then, I'm sure they will. But I'm still sure they will. Have enough. Even then, it's it it yeah, it's never gonna be enough. But here's the truth: the fact of the matter is, is every crash that you can get to happen in beta is theoretically one less crash that you will have have on live. Yeah. So, getting back to your original question. Yes, they will make the betas open to, for everyone because they want to crash the beta as much as possible. Yes. And then hope people report it. So if you are playing betas, do, do go and report it. I know it's annoying when stuff crashes and everybody just want to walk around and shoot people in the face. But like, please do report crashes because that just means we're going to get a more stable, more well-oiled game when it actually comes out. Hmm. So I'm thinking, uh, Astro, it's it's 4.42. I'm thinking I should sort of shut up now and let you interact with your community and just wind your stuff down and ask them questions and stuff. Yeah, I think also I'm, I don't know how many jumps I've been doing, just found a system with some uh, some water worlds I'm going to scan. But um, but yeah, I think I'll be uh, be slowly just here chit-chatting a bit with, the, with people in chat uh, as we go and do some more exploration. Um, but thanks a lot for dropping by, Kai. It was uh, it was great having a a little casual chat here while we've been been running around. And as always, of course, if you guys are interested, keep yourself updated um, with uh, with what's going on in Elite. You have Elite Week. He's just posted there, Kai from Elite Week. Just posted in chat. He does more um, like longer segments, longer news segments, um, and you can go and can watch those coming out. How often do we actually do them? You're still in chat, Kai? Yes, uh, we we record the show live every Friday night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time in America, which is midnight uh, UTC. Mm -hmm. So it's a Friday night. Uh, and we just did last week's show, uh, Friday night show. So from like four days ago, uh, five days ago, we did uh, a, a two and a half hour. We broke down every last thing piece by piece. And I can tell you that our guests had both seen the live stream multiple times and they were still like wait what they said that and we pulled out and played specific clips and mm. did word for word and pulled out stuff for people to see hey thank you for linking the show in the, in yeah. the show notes Don't, Laura. so if you guys are interested then there is a link for elite week highly recommended go over and uh, and show kai some uh, some love over on uh, on that channel and um and then, of course, when the next Dev Diary comes out, we don't know exactly when that is, but we will, of course, also be hosting Super Frienders, uh, um, the round tables again, so we can go and get uh, everybody on board and, uh, and dive into that information when it comes out. And Astro is going to be hosting the next one. That's He's right. Gonna I'm actually going to be hosting that one. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Anyway, I'm going to just uh, think or to scan this, see how many more systems I want to explore today, and uh, <laughs> talk a lot in chat. Like, I <laughs> takes a ten percent ad revenue, delivered as beer. Okay, thanks a lot, Kai, for uh, for dropping by. And let's go and let's scan this little water world. I've been a pretty um, pretty unlucky with my planets today. I think I've only found. I think this is the fourth water world today. The first one I completely forgot to map. Um, but, well, we've got to map this one instead. Um, 
Yeah, that's a good question. Do I think it will be floating in zero G in outposts? I really don't know. So okay, so I don't think we're gonna see EVA. Um, I don't know. I don't have any good arguments why. I just have a feeling like we're not gonna get EVA. But law-wise, in Elite, there is no artificial gravity other than, of course, spinning stations. So if we are to go into outposts that has no gravity, then you would say yes, then we should be floating around the zero G. Um, so that might also be an argument for why we may not see outpost interiors, because it's easier for them just to do, hey, we're only going to do places where there are gravity. But they're already going to be doing variant gravity because of planet sites. Like, I would assume that if magnetic heels, yeah, magnetic shoes could, uh, could be a thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think we're going to be floating in zero-G. Um, I don't know why. It just... It just... I don't know. In my mind, it's just not... Uh, it's just not the way it's, it's going to work. I don't have a good argument for it. It would be absolutely a thing that the Frontier could implement. No doubt about it. Um... It's, I mean, it's not difficult to implement zero G, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think another question, and I would actually think is much more interesting, is what are we going to do with controls? Um, will we be able to walk around our cockpit like in Star Citizens? No, I don't think we will, or we won't. Not at launch, at least. Stations are at 0.1 G. Yeah, no, not a, depends where you are on the station. Um, if you are in the hangar, yes, then the gravity is very low. But if you go out to the outsides, uh, close to the edge of the stations, then the gravity is much higher, closer to 1 G. Um, I did the math once. It checks out. Uh, what am I even doing? I'm going to click that button. Yeah, exactly. I think we would have been... Obviously, HOTAS for walking is not going to be a good experience. Um, so I think for all HOTAS players, they will have to have a, a second way of... Um, a second input option. Whether that is a controller of some sort, whether people are going to be swapping over to mouse and keyboard. I must admit that... I have a decent sized mouse pad and when I play I have my joystick sitting on the actual mouse pad itself but I still have enough room on the mouse pad on the far um, far right side that I can could comfortably I think maybe not a twitch shooter like go and shoot him up but I could run around with a character if I just needed to go in and get or like talk to some people or that kind of stuff um, I think I would probably try to do something that would allow me to use keyboard and mouse for um, for actually running the character instead of using the HOTAS. But I don't want to have to move the HOTAS out of the way every time I have to begin to walk around because that's going to be a little annoying, I think. But maybe that's what I'll have to do with it, though. Dongalora, you might, maybe you know that, actually. What do people do in... Uh, what do people do in Star Citizens? Because this problem must have been solved by someone in Star Citizen. Like, what is the most common way people swap from from hotels to walking? Um, I want to see DJ <laughs> stream from a huge hamster ball running on first person with a plastic gun. We'll pay a thousand for that stream. <laughs> well, well, I don't have a huge hamster ball, but... <laughs> oh, so you're running shelves. I see. Okay. So basically you would run a second... Like have a shelf and then... Okay, yeah, that could work. Because here's what I've been considering. And... and it's a little overkill, I know. But instead of having my hoses standing on my desk, I would get 
basically desk clamps that you could clamp it onto the desk. But then see if I could engineer some kind of solution for the joystick side where that clamp, instead of clamping onto the, um, to the table, it would clamp onto like a small, basically like a small trolley that could run on, on rails underneath the table. Um, so that you could like have the joystick somewhere out there. You could pull it in, lock it in place, sit and play, unlock it and slide it out of the way and then get access to the mouse. It would, I'm not an engineer, so it might be a little bit overkill, but in my mind, that would be, that would work. Let me save you a couple hundred dollars, Astro. Yeah, that already exists or? In, instead of getting those brackets for the table, cause I did that and now I'm going to upgrade again, get the brackets, they have them, special brackets that you can attach it to the underside of the arms of your uh, Titan, your Omega Labs, Secret Labs chair. Okay. And then you have the controllers so that your arm sits right on the armrest. And then when you move back for any reason, you're not banging your knees against the controllers that are bracketed to the desk. It still takes it off of, instead of the exact idea that you have of the hotess on the brackets, but the brackets are on your arms on your chair and your desk is now completely free and clean for your controller and or keyboard, however you want to do it. But So that's what I never really understood if you have your hotess on your chair, because when I sit, when I sit comfortably at, a, uh, at the table, the, the front edge of my armrests is pretty much lining up with the, with the edge of the table. Yeah, you would lean back a little. You would, you would, I would have to back go a back little like, and pull like, the keyboard out. Like this far. I would need to redo my lighting because this one is way too bright in, in this situation here. But, but mm. good. see if I go back here how much light there is at the yeah. green screen compared to where I'm sitting normally. Yeah, that's, but then people also get to see down to earth nipples. So that's also a plus. <laughs> Yeah. I just think it's better to just have it straight on the table and then have some, like, get it out of the way mechanism. But I guess having that down there would pretty much be the same. I would have to get further back in order to use it. Um, so maybe I'll just, I don't know, take it and put it aside when I don't need it. Something like that. I don't know. Oh, hold on. What is this? Is this a water world? Yes, it's a water world. Great. Okay, people are saying that chair mounts are better. There was a company, hold on, do they still exist? Uh, there was a company at some point. I wanted to try and work with them. Oh, they're actually up and running. I was talking to this guy when he was starting up his site, and it's called Wolf's Hardware, and he basically built chairs that has built-in plates for a HOTAS. Um, but it was years ago I was talking to him, uh, but it never really worked out. I just wanted to see who was actually up and running, but it seems like he is. That's pretty cool. I saw a bracket set up that somebody had on their Titan, Secret Lab Titan chair, that was phenomenal looking. That's what I'm going to upgrade to. Great. Alternatively, I could just get like a, yeah, you don't have to upgrade the desk, maybe get like a, a desk with a cutout. I don't know. What I want to do. Monster tech people. Yeah, there's a lot of people who do good brackets and I will probably look into it if uh, if I uh, when eventually I'm going to probably move this thing down to uh, to my chairs instead <clears throat> of where it is right now. Um, I need to scan this system. That's what I'm doing. Uh, where am I even going? There we go. There's something. Might also just go full on and then auto up. Have you seen, have you guys seen the, um, what's his name? Uh, Simtech. Do you know Simtech? Now, that is an expensive solution, but god damn it, it looks good. <laughs> they make. Let me see if I can find them here. I think they're called Simtech. No, that's not it. Can't remember the name then. 
but they make like curved displays, curved projector monitors that you can put up and then you can put projectors on. You get like a 180 degree view. Looks amazing. I want to try that someday. Um, will there be VR support for Odyssey? Yes, not the on foot part. Well, the, partly there will be like a hybrid for the on the on foot part. Um, you will get a 2D display in your VR headset, but for everything else, there's going to be VR support. k beams and make a, a 50 meter display <clears throat> sim pit yes it's sim pits and not sim tech it's sim pit sim pit there we go not not the youtube channel uh sim pit no mm, oh, oh was that actually it it's in from new zealand i know I can't find their sites. Anyway, I'm going to quickly explore the system. Mm -mm -mm. Did I finish this? I think I did. Anything? Oh, there we go. Uh, there it is. I'll see if I can find them. I can't remember their name now. Oh, there it was. How far away was that? Mm. Orbital. Ah, it's not bad. You're very, very welcome, Raging. Uh, uh, uh. There's just a gas giant somewhere that I haven't spotted yet. Where is that gas giant? Not that it really so, matters. So Astro, I just linked you in Discord DM to possible solutions that I think your people would love to see and blow their minds. Okay, let's see here. Hold on, I need Reddit. Oh, not Reddit. Uh, I need uh, <laughs> Discord. I need the Discord on the other other machine here because sometimes copy pasting is... Let me just get uh, this running here. Uh, where are you? There you are. We have... What do we have here? Oh, right. Yeah, okay. If I had the money for either of these, I would be so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's just holding on to... Holy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no hotas. It's hand on stick and bar. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah. I like the missiles on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> what is it playing? War Thunder? And that is a... That's a Warthog, right? It seems like a Warthog. Yeah, it's a Warthog. Yeah. He trusts it now that he's got both hands on the on the. Well, no, he's back to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he trusted but, a little. But one thing is, as awesome as it is, the wife appeal factor is not great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah, right. Oh. Let's just kill the music here. I've seen those. They had them at GamesCon last year. Not that exact model, but something very similar. 
Maybe it is actually that, that exact. No, no, not with the legs. Look at the legs. Looks like a scorpion. Yeah. That sounds expensive or looks expensive. I I thought your people would love to see that. Yeah, it's it's these are both stupid expensive, and I don't know why they have a Japanese schoolgirl who's demonstrating it. Well, I do know why, but uh, <laughs> but but uh, like, oh my God, they they look cool. If you win the lottery, that's that's the thing to do. I need a new apartment if I need something like that. Yeah. I could see the little scorpion tail going through your the balcony that you just made for your girlfriend's yeah. office. Everything just comes office. everything just comes crashing down. Yeah. Let me get chat back again here so we can see what we're doing. Oh great. Twitch chat, where did you go? No, I lost Twitch. Hold on, give me a second. Let me get Twitch back. There you are. Yeah, you would need extension cables for everything. I'm uh, pretty sure you would. If you have to run all the cables up through the spine of the... Uh, Course, it's that one. Furthest out. Okay, let's go. But yeah, probably quite a few extensions, extension cables for that. Um, but no, the first up, next upgrade I'm gonna do for the for the studio is gonna be getting my VR setup back up. I haven't had that up since we built the loft, so it's been quite a while now. So I need to get that back up and running. Um. Do you remember the three million credits section with eight planets on your Rope to Riches video? I was doing a straight line route to top the blaster and that exact same system, nope, showed up and I was like, yes. <laughs> I don't remember it because it's quite a while since I did that video, but um, it would make sense since if you're running Road to Riches, it have a tendency to put you into the same systems. Um, and yes, it's a very valuable system. What do I think about Star Wars Squadrons? It looks interesting. Um, I don't know, for some reason, the Star Wars universe never really caught on much. I mean, I've, don't get me wrong, I've watched the movies and, and, and that, but. But I've never been that much of a Star Wars uh, fanboy. I've been much more into um, Stargate, watched a lot of Stargate twice, um, and lately also um, Star Trek more than uh, than Star Wars, to be honest. And um, this might uh, that might create some uh, <laughs> some splits in the chat. But no. Let me see what we get here. Oops, that was a bit of a missed shot. That was not very well done. It is six, oh, seven probes. I'll see if I can do it with six. Dude, this is gonna be... The back hit was pretty good, but I don't think we're going to hit that oh, 2%. Okay, so I need to find 2% somewhere. <clears throat> I think that should do it. I'm hoping to get this area here covered. And that that will give me 2%. Come on. There we go. Got it. With the efficiency bonus. Nice. Okay, so let me just check how far we actually got today. Because... Okay, I managed to cover like... Just over 2,000 light years. That's actually pretty good. So, in case you're not familiar, this is my uh, one of my alts. 
that I set out from the bubble like over a year ago now. And then I went over here, explored a bit. I went in and I spent some time in the in the colonial area, had a lot of fun there. And after I was kind of getting bored with colonial, I decided to go out on a little exploration trip. That's what all these bookmarks are. I'm going to head back to uh, to this area here um, where I have a lot of bookmarks here I want to go and explore. And then I think I'll head back to Colonia and maybe begin to unlock some engineers with this character or something like that. I don't know what we'll do after that. Um, but at the very least, I'm going to head into this cluster of, uh, of blueprints, blueprints, uh, bookmarks. No, the surface uh, analyzer is not engineered. I don't have that unlocked on this character. This is my colonial. I don't have a lot of engineers unlocked. I think I uh, have most of the colonial one unlocked, maybe. But uh, yeah, not a lot in the bubble. Anyway, guys, I think that um, that I'll be calling it for tonight. It was uh, it was actually quite fun. It was really nice having some people online, have a nice casual chat. Once again, thanks a lot to um, JN Tracks from uh, Elite. Uh, no, sorry, <laughs> from um, Loose Group Podcast. Thanks a lot to Kai from Elite Week. Go check out both of them. They are awesome people. And in the chat here in a second, you will most likely see a whole host of links where you can find also and of course the description below the stream where you can find links for both the commander's toolbox if you need help with link there's a lot of useful tools over there lots of social links if you want to follow the channel on other platforms also link for streamlabs if you want to do one-time donations and support the channel as well as teespring where you can buy yourself some merchandise t-shirt hoodies mugs like the one i have here and there's also a link for patreon if you want to support the channel on a more recurring basis. And finally, the most important link is, of course, for Discord, where you can join the channel's community. Very nice open community where we not only play um, uh, Elite, but also other games. People normally just like hang out, have a chat, much like me and, um, and Kai has been doing today. Just sit, have a casual chat about the game and whatever we feel like chatting about that, uh, that specific day. So come over. I will be uh, hanging out. Yeah, it's not that late. I'll be hanging out on Discord after the stream. So you can come over and you can say hi if you want to. I uh, hope we'll see you guys there. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't given the stream a like, go down and do that now. Follow the channel if you're watching on Twitch or to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And also next time, I will see you guys in space.